This video is about disc herniation. A disc herniation is a small mass in the spinal canal or intervertebral foramen most common in the lumbar region that is contiguous with the intervertebral disc unless it has a sequestered from the intervertebral disc. In most cases, the cause is disc degeneration, which causes a tear in the fibrous annulus so that the inner nucleus propulsus extends through the defect. Another infrequent cause can be a history of trauma, but in most cases this comes on top of an already degenerated disc. If the greatest diameter of the herniated disc is smaller than the distance between the edges of the base, you talk of a disc protrusion, which is still contained by a thin layer of annulus fibers. If its greatest diameter is greater than the distance between the edges of the base, it is called a disc extrusion. Both may either be focal or broad-based. An intervertebral herniation is called a small node. Depending on the size and location of the disc herniation, it can lead to localized or radicular pain and motor impairment. A massive disc extrusion or sequestration might compress the myelin or conus and cause a myelopathy or conus syndrome with bladder and defecation dysfunction. When these symptoms occur, it is a medical emergency. The best imaging tool to look for a disc herniation is the MRI. On MRI, the herniated disc appears iso-intense to hyper-intense to the parent disc on the T1 image. Sometimes you may see a low signal due to calcification or vacuum phenomenon. Generally, it is a lot easier to detect a herniated disc on a T2 image because the high signal of the surrounding spinal fluid makes it easier to, to dis detect. Also, the stir image, which also shows high signal of the cerebral spinal fluid, makes it easier to see. On T2 as well as stirs, the signal is very variable depending on the hydration state and the presence of calcifications. A tear within the herniated disc can be seen as a small bright spot within the herniated disc. This is always a sign for a disc extrusion. Here, for example, you can see this small bright spot right within this extrusion, which is a sign of a tear of the annulus fibrosis. After contrast application, there might be a peripheral enhancement due to granulation tissue or dilated epidural plexus. The disc material itself does generally not enhance unless in chronic cases when it might be vascularized. Here you have another example of an intervertebral foramen that is occluded by a disc extrusion. And here you see the, the fat within the intervertebral foramen. And here you can't see the fat anymore because there's disc material. On the corresponding axial plane, here you see where we are, you see that compared to the left side, the disc within the intervertebral foramen that has contact, contact to the nerve root. Another example of a disc extrusion within an intervertebral foramen is seen on this image here. And also again, you see the corresponding axial planes where you can see that the disc material is within this foramen and has con contact to the spinal nerve root here is the spinal nerve root on the contralateral side. Here you see a very big extrusion which is localized even more caudally, caudally than the intervertebral disc. Here is a T2 image and here you have the T1 image. This can be seen because here you have a sacral cyst within the sacral canal which has bright signal, fluid signal on the T2 and dark signal on the T1. Apart from that, the fat, the subcutaneous fat, the interabdominal fat and also the fat within the intervertebral foramina are bright in T1 as well as T2. Here you see the corresponding axial planes again with this big extrusion here seen laterally in the spinal canal having contact to the first sacral nerve root. 
And again, a very big extrusion, actually a sequester, because it doesn't have contact to the parent disc anymore and it is lying below the intervertebral disc in the spinal canal. After contrast application, see here this image and the subtraction image, you have a peripheral enhancement due to granulation tissue. Here again, this extrusion and the corresponding axial planes, which narrow the spinal canal and lie left laterally within the spinal canal, having contact to the nerve roots and also compressing, narrowing the spinal canal. Depending on the symptoms, there is a variety of treatment options. If pain, like in most cases, is, a, is the only symptom, the first-line therapy is conservative with drug therapy, physiotherapy or acupuncture. In most cases, the symptoms will improve as the herniated disc reduces in size over time. In case of failure of the first-line therapy, your neurologic dysfunction has occurred, surgery is the next option. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, it would be great if you shared, liked or commented it. You are welcome to subscribe my channel for free. Just click here. If you want to watch another of my videos, click here. If you want to go directly to my channel, click here.